Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Angela Brennan and today I'm bringing you Spellbinders Club Kits June 2024, the clear stamp and die of the month, as well as the wax seal of the month. And I also use the embossing folder, the 2D embossing folder of the month. And that's the thing about Spellbinders Club Kits. It's usually uh, released as a theme. So this month's theme is all about summer. So I can use the various club kits together to create cards. The clear stamp of the month, I stamp the images and use the coordinating dies to die cut them out. I start off with a, it's a 300 GSM card, or I think it's about 100 over pounds card stock because I'm going to do some ink blending on it as well. I stamp the keychain image and before I do that, I gently rub the new stamp with a stamp conditioning eraser to remove the shine, the sheen on the stamp so that it absorbs the ink carefully. I also treat the card with some anti-static powder as I'm going to do some heat embossing. I gently tap some VersaFine Claire Nocturne pigment ink onto the stamp, close the door of the stamping platform and use my stamp press tool to gently press the image onto the card. I'm also going to be putting the internal image on the keychain. Now, though I put this in the keychain just to see how it goes, you could do it that way, but I end up die cutting that separately and sticking it onto the keychain. Initially, I thought I'm going to just color it all together, but I think adding an additional dimension to the image in the middle of the keychain does help. Here, I'm sprinkling some super fine clear embossing powder and heat embossing it or melting the embossing powder with my heat tool or heat gun. This is the WOW heating tool and there are two speeds, one and two. I always use the second speed to do the melting of the embossing powder. The first heat I usually use to dry either ink or watercolor uh, images. So it's just a dry pigment to dye color medium on my cards. But I repeat the stamping with the three smaller images that goes on the middle of the keychain. And I follow the same process, stamping them with nocturne pigment ink, sprinkling clear embossing powder and melting that embossing powder with my heat gun too. This allows it to have a nice shine and it's also smear free because pigment ink takes a little bit longer to dry and it can smear quite easily if you don't give it enough time to dry. I do like to have all of my images heat embossed. Another advantage of heat embossing the images, it allows for the emboss resist technique. And that's what I do with the Catherine Puller gold metallic pigment ink here. I just rub the metallic ink onto the image that I've embossed. And then what I can do is just wipe it off. I wanted the keychain to have a goldish outlook, not too strong, but slightly like more of a tarnished gold. So all I do is rub off the ink or with a dry cloth and all the embossed areas will resist that ink. I use the coordinating die to die cut it. It's easy enough to do. And when I do use the coordinating die to die cut it, I use the best ever craft tape to keep the die in place when I put it through the die cutting machine. And voila, you have a gold-ish keychain. For the images that will go onto the keychain, you saw me stamp them earlier. Now I'm going to color them with my Copic markers. Easy enough to choose the colors. I choose about three gradations of colors, uh, three different color schemes and that match, that complement one another. And I color all three images with a similar color. And then all I do is die cut them and put it in the middle of the keychain. In saying that, I don't die cut them and put it in the keychain for all of the cards. I think for one or two cards, I do die cut them and put them in the middle of keychain. But there are a couple of cards that I do, in fact, more than a couple of cards, I do just put the images on the front of the card without the keychain. It's quite versatile, you can use it either way. These images can either be colored with Copic markers, color pencils, or whatever coloring medium you have, or they can do. you can do some ink blending on them, as I do them later, or you can just stamp them and eat emboss them with different colored embossing powder and just leave them as is. Many ways that you can use this image. You don't necessarily have to color them. You can color them or not, totally up to you. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos are uploaded. 
I do lots of Spellbinder Club Kit video tutorials. In fact, once I finish all my videos for the month, I will create a playlist. So all you need to do is save the link to the playlist and you'll have all the four, five or six videos that I will do for the club kits that I do get from Spellbinders to create videos on them. I do have about eight of the 10 club kits that are released every month and I do create videos with them. And quite often I do use more than one club kit for my cards that I create because the club kits go so well together. For example, in this video, I use the clear stamp and die of the month, the wax seal of the month, as well as the embossing folder, the 2D embossing folder of the month. Easy enough to do because the theme works well, which is why I also store my Spellbinder club kits together by theme, by month unless they are sentiment heavy. When I say sentiment heavy, they are generic sentiment heavy. Like this month's glimmer of the month is all about sentiments, but the sentiments are very linked to the theme of the rest of the club kits. So I will store them together because it's a very much summer themed sentiment. I hope all of that makes sense. I also do lots of uh, core collection releases that Spellbinders have every month, which is outside of the Spellbinders club kits. So I do tutorials on that as well. And that's usually the second half of the month. The first half of the month is very much focused on the Spellbinders Club Kits so that you'll have enough inspiration to get on with it when you get your Club Kits. The Club Kits are usually delivered between the 6th and the 27th of each month. And you can subscribe to any of the Club Kits you want during that period, the 6th to the 27th of each month. I hope all of that makes sense. And um, I've got all the products that I use listed in the description below. So for your easy reference, you can check it out. I really hope you get inspiration from these videos and do leave me a comment. Um, if you've got any queries, any questions, anything that you want to see that could make the videos better. I do get uh, a guide from the comments that I get. So I will be able to cater the videos more for what is required. I laid a lighter color of the Copics, but then after finishing it off, I decided to go in with a stronger color. So the ending is more of a nice, strong sunset background. Once I finished coloring the images, I used a coordinating hexagon die to die cut each of the images. There's only one hexagon die, so you die cut them one by one. The die cut image will fit perfectly in the middle of the keychain image that I just die cut earlier on or you can use them separately. It really depends. I also die cut extra hexagons from scrap card because I like to layer the back of these colored images just to give it an additional thickness. Here's another set that I've done with slightly different color scheme. I do the same emboss resist technique with a couple of other metallic inks that I have from Catherine Puller. This is the silver metallic ink and I also will rub it with a dry cloth to get a silver-ish keychain. Initially, I want to use these keychains in separate cards, but I end up using three keychains on one card. And here I do the same with the champagne metallic pigment ink. Slightly different. These are what I think all metal keychains look like. And that's why I wanted to use these colors with the emboss resist technique. And I think it goes really well with it. So I end up using all three keychains on one card and you'll see me put that card together. You can try this technique with any inks you have. It doesn't have to be a metallic ink, but I just wanted to use my metallic ink here because I thought it has got a metal-ish colors. And here you see all three of them, the champagne metallic, silver metallic, and gold metallic pigment ink. I've been wanting to use it and I thought it's really a great time to use it. And I like the pop of color that colored images give it. I just think it looks really good. And what I'm doing here now is I'm just doing an outline of the hexagon die because I'm going to use some Copic colors, the same colors I used for coloring the images earlier, and I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the clear stamp of the month. Now the sentiments in the clear stamp of the month are quite long, so what I'm going to do is what I call partial stamping. It's pretty easy to do partial stamping and I've done it a few times on my videos. What you'll see me do is just block out part of the stamp or the sentiment with a cello tape ink the bit that I want to stamp, remove the cello tape and stamp it onto the area that I want to stamp it. Pretty straightforward. It just needs a little bit of planning. So here I'm going to be stamping the sentiment, let's be adventurous, happy retirement. So the first one here I stamp is adventurous because it's the longest word. So I want to put it in the 
middle of the, the hexagon here because the middle is the most space it has. So I'm ta I've blocked out the word let's be with cello tape. I inked the adventurous word and I'm stamping the word adventurous. I'm using clear embossing ink and then I'm going to sprinkle some white embossing powder and all this stray embossing powder I remove with a dry paint brush and then I heat emboss the stamped image and you've got the word adventurous and I do the same thing with let's be and happy retirement. I just think this is a way to get more out of your stamps. Just because a long sentiment doesn't fit in a space, don't be discouraged. You can always do some what I call partial stamping here. So you can get those images. It doesn't have to be just sentiments. You can get any of those images into the space that you want to. All you need to do is to remember, especially if you're doing heat embossing, to constantly use the anti-static powder so you don't have the embossing powder all over the image. And then it gets pretty straightforward. So I do let's be adventurous and happy in white embossing powder and retirement. I do stamp it with black pigment ink and sprinkle clear embossing powder. It's a little bit fiddly. It takes a little bit of time, but so worth it when you get that sentiment that you want to be put into the space that you want. And because the other three images are hexagons, I wanted the same hexagon to hold the sentiment as well. And I think it goes so well. And I do put all four of them onto one card. So you've got four hexagons on the front of one card. I'll show you how I put that together. quite a strong background but I'm wondering now whether the background is actually too strong for this card. I do go ahead and make this card anyway with that background because I think the blue pops but after making it I was just not too sure but I just go ahead and do but I do a variation of this card later on um, with a plain or less vibrant background so you can have a look and let me know which one you think looks better. I put the four hexagons together with the aid of a T ruler so I can get them nice and straight and that's pretty much done because the sentiment is in the fourth hexagon. Pretty straightforward. I kept the color scheme to the minimum. Maybe overdid it with the background. Not too sure. But do let me know in the comments whether you think this background is too heavy or the one with the similar color scheme and a lighter background looks better.
employing the embossed resist technique for this sentiments as well. I'm stamping the sentiment with clear embossing ink. Going to sprinkle some white embossing powder on white card so you can barely see it when it's embossed. But then I'm going to put some distress oxide ink on it so the color will pop. So it'll resist, the ink will resist all the embossed areas so you'll see the sentiment in white. This is a great way to get the sentiment to match whatever background you're using or the color scheme that you want to match without having too much or too many colored card around. This way, the card or the color of the sentiment can perfectly match whatever background you're doing. So for instance, for this card here, I've used price ribbon in the background ink blending and it will match the card exactly for the sentiment. I use a dry cloth to wipe off all the ink on the embossed areas so the white sentiment will pop out against the dark blue background. Perfect. I place all three keychains onto the card. The third keychain, I pop it up for some dimension and I place the sentiment right at the bottom to match the price ribbon color. I like how the keychains pop against the blue background that's been embossed with some light white pigment ink on the raised areas. I think it's come out pretty well. Tell me what you think of this card. I'm pretty proud of this card. Now this card is quite heavy on the front because you've got the foam sheet, the embossed background, and then you've got the keychain as well. So the back is a little bit light. So I just put another, a 300 G SM card in the insert. So it balances out so you can get the card to stand on its own without flopping down. That's one way to balance out the weight of the card in the front and the back. And there you go, you can prop the card up. Just a little that trick that I use. Now I'm going to do some white on white embossing of the three images and do some ink blending. So I said earlier, you don't have to color them in detail with Copic markers or color pencils or whatever. So you can do some really quick ink blending here with three colors. The third color I use is a Enchanted Gold Pigment Ink. Now it's a little bit light when I put it on, but I don't show it, but I do end up using some metallic watercolor to add on to the gold at the bottom, which is all the water elements on each of these images. I do use some metallic gold watercolor to add some additional gold to this. I like the simplicity of how these three colors turned out. Here are the images that I've ink blended on. Now to do some wax seal with some wax beads. Uh, you'll see I'm actually warming up the wax seal as well as the wax beads because I'm going to remove, yes, I just want the main image in gold and I easier to remove the wax seal and get it embedded into those grooves if the wax seal itself is hot. Now I'm going to be putting the other teal colors within the combination. There's three different teal colors and I'm just going to put the wax seal on it. So you don't have to use your gold metallic pen. You've got the grooves, got the main image in already gold wax seal. So pretty when you get it. I use this non-stick wax seal spoons which make it so easy for the residual wax to be removed. I'll put the link on it and where I got it. I just got an Amazon and even this hexagon shape to make sure you keep your wax seal within the shape. I got this from Amazon as well. I'll put all these links in the description below so you can check it out if you want to get them. It's nice and easy to keep your wax seal controlled if you've got difficulty keeping the shape of it. I had so much fun doing quite a few of these wax seals and I use it in quite a few of the cards but I also will keep it to use it in future cards. I've got another video to do on this theme. So I'll probably use it with that. Once I F the warmer out and start melting the wax beads, I continuously make a few of these wax seals because it's nice and easy to do. I have two burners which makes it easy as well. And I've got two of those spoons. So you can do it quicker. With wax seals, it takes a little bit of practice to get the perfect circle. Get some aids if you want. There's silicone mats, there's shapes that I've shown you. 
try heating up the wax seal and putting different colors within one wax seal. You're removing the bubbles on melted wax seal using a flame. So here I've done the main core in gold, the background in teal, and now I want to set the entire thing in gold. It's a slightly different look. I just think it's nice to experiment with this when you've got different ways of you doing it. Look at that. So you don't even need your metallic markers because the grooves have got the gold wax seal. I think it's so pretty. Here I'm doing some partial embossing. Just place the embossing folder up to where you want on your card panel and put it through your embossing machine. So you've got the sentiment there which I've stamped and embossed, uh, heat embossed, and I don't want that messed up. So here is a different version of the card. Earlier you saw me make the card with quite a heavy background. Here it's a lighter background. I like both cards. I think I like the tone and tone look, but I also like the lighter background. Let me know what you think. I just think it's a different version of a sunset card. I do partial stamping and partial embossing here. I also show you a technique with a wax seal where you can get two different colors by warming up the wax seal in advance. I hope you like all these different tips and tricks and techniques I've shown you. Let me know which one works for you and which one that you think really is something you enjoy doing. I would really like to hear from you so I can show more of the same techniques or different techniques in different ways. This card panel here, I did some light coloring in the background of the top just to give it a bit of a shadow or a halo before I place the keychain on it. I'm stamping the sentiment here with pigment ink, going to do some heat embossing with clear embossing powder and then I'm going to do some partial embossing with the embossing folder like I showed earlier. So this is going to be the base of the card.
have a few ink blended panels here. I've got a whole stash of blending swatches, ink blending swatches, and I'll put a link in the description below to show you how I created all these blending swatches and the various color combinations that I have. And you can have a look at it in the description below. I created this ink blending backgrounds on Strathmore mixed media paper. Again, that will be in the description below. But what I'm doing here is creating the backgrounds to do some embossing with my embossing folder. Per usual, I will spritz a little bit of water at the back of the panel to soften the fibers in the card to prevent the card from cracking. And I just embossed all of these panels. The final one, I'm going to do some debossing. Now, because it's a waved pattern, you don't see that much of a difference in the debossing. You just see the images the other way around. The left is debossed, the right is embossed. You just see it the other way around. So I don't do much other than just, I don't add any more color to it. Because if there's much more of a difference in the pattern, I might do a little bit more to it. Here are all the completed cards. I added some gems to it and you can see I end up making quite a few cards. I think almost 10 cards I made here. So you've got quite a few strong backgrounds and color popping. Some of it looks more like tone in tone and some of it I decided to do too. So this one you've got a lighter version of it with a lighter background and you'll see the other one here. It's pretty much similar color theme but a stronger background. So the left one is more of a tone and tone and the right one is more of a color popping. I just thought I'd do both and you can see which one you think looks better. And you saw these cards here. These, this card I made, I really like this card. This is my favorite card of all the cards I made. And here I kept on really light, light tones here and I used rose gold embossing powder. And you don't have to color the images here, just keep it simple. And this card you saw me make with some partial embossing. I like the fact there's quite a few techniques involved. And here I've got, I added the uncolored or the, the, the hexagons without any coloring, just with gold embossing. I liked that. And here I did, you saw me make this card and I added the additional hexagons later on because I thought it gives it a bit more of a pop to the card. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when more videos are uploaded. All products used are listed in the description below for your ease of reference. And I have the link to the video for the ink blending combinations, color combos with, I think, 100 over color combos in my website. So do check it out for some inspiration. Thank you so much for stopping by. Do leave me a comment and let me know what you think, which cards you think are better or not, or if you've got any ideas how the videos can be better. Appreciate all your feedback and you stopping by. Take care and happy crafting to all of you.